Hi, it's Jan again, the second part of the Vipassana, which is about explaining to you or describing to you what I experienced during the process of the Vipassana. And basically you could say that uh, the sitting and the walking, first you have to get into the rhythm, you have to understand how fast you should walk uh, and, and so on. So there is kind of the first day goes with that that you find your rhythm and you find your way and you find where you're walking and where you're sitting, which is uh, of course depending on where you are. But I was sitting in the Buddhist temple and when I was walking, I was just walking around the Buddhist temple. Then there, we found other ways because that's also boring to have the same route every day. But the Buddhist temple area is, uh, is pretty big, so, uh, so I think at the time we were 25 students and, uh, and there was like space enough. And if you meet another student, you don't talk to them, you don't, uh, you don't, you don't disturb each other. That's basically uh, the whole point. You are supposed to be silent. And even if you get disturbed from outer circumstances, you do nothing. You don't react to it. You are in you. And that's the point. But after the first day, honestly, um, the body is in pain. Honestly, it's, uh, it's, it's painful to sit one hour and it's painful then to walk. If you only sit, I mean, you will have even bigger trouble, right? Because then you cannot rise up again. But um, the point was that at the first evening, we get the question, uh, and that is, of course, uh, how, or, oh, sorry, that was in the next morning. And we were asked, so how are you feeling today? And uh, first of all, you can imagine that most of us were sleeping deeply uh, after this, uh, you can call it a physical performance. But most of us was also very physically in pain. And so they asked us, so how do you deal with, the, uh, do you feel in pain? And everyone was saying, yes, we do. And uh, then, then basically instructors said, okay, now I'll teach you how to get rid of the pain. And basically that was, I mean, a major, a major thing. And I've used it since uh, many times. Pain is only in one place and that's here. So when you have a disaster, when you have an accident, when you have a pain anywhere else in the body, there is two ways to deal with it. One way is to redirect it, and I will tell you how. Second one is to let it go by going through it and accepting it. The first one is about redirecting. So if you have a pain in your foot, in your stomach, in your back, which is not, let's call it permanent, right? If it's permanent, you have to do something about it. You have to get the diagnosis. There might be something wrong physically, right? But if it's not like that, then basically you can redirect it by putting pain somewhere else. That's the redirecting. How do you put pain some, somewhere else? And I had a accident in, uh, in Bali, like I told you before, and which actually torn up my, my leg. Uh, and uh, that was painful. So the way I got rid of the pain in the leg was actually by biting my thumb as hard that the pain was bigger than in the leg. That's redirection. The second way is about focus, and that's to focus in on the pain long enough through a meditation that it goes away. And then, sorry I said that wrong, the third one is actually go through it. Accept the pain. It's all in the mind. That's just what I wanted to share with you about that. But basically, as I said before, we gone through those days and we had the lunch, we had the water, we were putting down in the book what, we, what came up. And after the first three to, three to four days, these subconscious things starting to happen. 
which means that all guilt, all anger, all rage, even, even uh, happy periods that actually brought you regret after, came up slowly one by one and signing putting that in the book of course was was painful in itself because suddenly you realized oh my god i've been carrying this all my life uh, some of them was for me at least all my life so what am i going to do about this i didn't know what to do about it at that time but that was kind of the second part of the process so that actually is how it works that you basically walk and you sit and you find a way to get rid of the pain and then you walk and you sit again and basically do that for all 10 days. Some will ask what happened on the way and I can tell you that because I told you about the observer I can tell you that basically I almost got a little crazy. At a point uh, when I was sitting, meditating outside, suddenly hundreds of dragonflies were coming. And I was, well, of course, I was in an area which is uh, purely nature and beautiful and everything. So, but, but somehow these dragonflies were giving me messages. <laughs> I'm sure most of you will laugh now. I do myself. They were giving me messages that I never heard about before. That could be messages about cosmos, messages about myself, messages about my family. And I, I, I didn't understand why, how come that these guys can come there, hundreds of them, and then give me messages. I found out the day after when I was in the observing room, the observer's room, and uh, I said, I told, the, I told the nun what was going on. And she said, it's very simple. You don't trust your inner self. So what you have to work on is to start trusting your inner self to give you the messages that you need and that you are um, serving uh, or getting and deserving to get. And of course, that, at, at when she said that gave me a lot of, uh, of uh, resonance, but um, it didn't mean that I could change it from day to day. I mean, that was a task in itself to really start trusting my inner self or higher self or God or whatever we use as when we are doing channelings and so on. That was a very important part for me. And that's what I still use today, of course, that I, I know. Well, still today, I have to say that whenever more than one dragonfly is coming. I start listening for the message. <laughs> uh, that's, that's a consequence of, of some of these things. And it doesn't mean we're crazy. It just means that we open us up more to our own vibration. <laughs> but anyway, so that was kind of, uh, yeah, then what happens is that actually when you go into the fifth and sixth and seven days, you get more and more of these things up and you start wondering, okay, how am I going to deal with that? And the way to deal with that is basically to go in deeper in your meditation when you're sitting there meditating and finding out what to do about it. How are you going to deal with it? Do you want to just let it go? Or do you want to let it torture you the rest of your life? That's a choice. I mean, free will and choice is basically the most important in these things. So. That is like um, what I experienced on the, the retreat. And then after the retreat, a lot of mystical things started to happen. And I, I will tell you one thing, and that was that when I arrived in Bali uh, at this time, it was like three, four months before, I was asking to meet Gede Prama because I had heard that he was the main spiritual guide in Bali. And they told me, you cannot just meet him. He will meet you when you are ready. And what happened was that on the, third, on the, on the 12th of uh, January of 2009, after the retreat and the celebration with uh, all the monks and, and so on, I get a message. 
uh, get a prama is waiting for you. Uh, how did he know that I was here? We don't know that. He's sitting in the canteen waiting for you. <laughs> Out of nowhere. So basically I went down to the canteen and he brought me to his home for one hour. Uh, probably because somehow these mystical things is uh, going up to people with higher vibration. And that means that sometimes we meet people that knows more about ourselves than we ourselves do. So we had a chat for one hour and then uh, three, hours, uh, three years later I attended one of Gita Prama's uh, Vipassana retreats and uh, again that was a major experience. I hope you have enjoyed this so far. The last thing I will tell you is the consequences after in the Buddhist temple, because I lived there for two and a half months more, excuse me, two months more, um, uh, after the 12th of, uh, of uh, January. And at that time, it also was that I was going to the temple right where I was getting my second and my third initiations, which I've told you about before related to how I started to trust God. I welcome you back for the third about Vipassana and after Vipassana. And I hope that you will subscribe to my channel. I hope that you will like, share, and comment, put any questions you have, and I will respond to it. I'll see you soon again. Love you all. Thank you.